Welcome to Midweek. Thank you so much for joining us. It is our prayer that uh, these times we're spending together studying the book of Colossians are helping you to live a Christian life in this not-so-Christian world. Now, we're six weeks into this study. We're about halfway, so let's take a, uh, a little time to recap uh, what we've looked at so far as we've dug into Paul's letter. And we've talked about how to live a, a life that's pleasing to God, basically to do the good deeds that he has for us to do, to get to know him for who he really is, to endure until the work is finished, and to be thankful in all that we do. Then we gave a new definition. Paul gives us a new definition to a successful life. It's not about money. It's not about power. It's about making a positive difference in people's lives. And then the last couple of weeks, we looked at how to have a stable walk with Christ, how to get off the roller coaster of ups and downs and to, to live a life rooted in him, just like the first day we were saved, rooted in him, built up in him continually, continually to work with the Spirit to, be, to gain that perfection that's coming, and to also, again, live in grateful uh, thanks for, for what he's going to do for us. Now, today, we're going to dig into something uh, that I think is the most important of uh, the principles that Paul's going to teach us in the letter so far. It's so important that we're actually going to take three sessions to dig into, into this one thing. Um, so if you have your Bibles, we're going to be looking at Colossians chapter 2. So go ahead and turn there and get your notebook or journal ready because I promise you, you're going to want to write this down. Now, we just talked about living a stable life in Christ, about getting off that roller coaster. And Paul's going to change gears here a little bit. The first part of the letter he spent talking about the principles of living, how to, how to gain that stability, how to live a life in Christ and not just for Christ. Today, or in this part of the letter, he's changing gears and he starts giving us some warnings. He starts telling us about the things that are truly dangerous to us in our walk and will, will take us out of that walk. And um, it's something that's still here today. It's why it's so important for us to really hear what Paul's got to say. We're living in this time of pandemic and, and the changes that have uh, it's brought to our lives. And we've seen a rise in what can be called misinformation. Now, this actually started before the pandemic due to the current political divide in our country in the last few years. And, and social media has given a platform to, uh, or an outlet to people who basically want to get famous or get attention or who want to cause disruptions by spreading lies and, and doubts about people, about procedures, about philosophies. But the reality is, this is nothing new. Misinformation has been with us since history began. Take a look. It was misinformation that Satan used to tempt Eve, and then she used to tempt Adam. And Paul is going to warn us about this, this misinformation and how it can hurt us in our Christian walk. Take a look at Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world, rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ, you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. So Paul's telling us there's misinformation out there. And one of the most dangerous pieces of misinformation that Paul's warning us about is the idea that we need something else. The idea that, yes, you may 
believe in Christ, but you also need to fill in the blank. That warning is so important to us because with the way that information or misinformation can be spread today, it's easier than ever for us as believers to have doubts, to, uh, to have dangerous ideas put into our heads. And these ideas, as Paul says, can lead us to become captive to human traditions and forces of this world. Paul described our relationship with God in a much simpler and more straightforward term. If we want to experience the fullness of God, there's only one way to do it. We don't have to chant. We don't have to dance. We don't have to shave our heads. We don't have to mutilate our bodies. We don't have to wear a funny robe. We don't have to join a club. We don't have to buy a certain type of water or a certain type of oil. We don't have to vote for a particular political party. All we have to do, all that we can do to experience the fullness of God is to connect with him through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because as Paul says, Christ is the fullness of God. When you or I have a relationship with Christ, we have all that God has to offer. You can access him any time of the day or night. You can pray to him. You can sing to him. You can cry to him. You can talk to him. You can laugh with him. Or you can just rest in his presence. When we have a relationship with Christ, we have his spirit living in us. His spirit comforts us. It teaches us. It guides us. And it convicts us of our sin so that we can learn to become a better person. When we have a relationship with Christ, you and I have God on our side. He protects us through the storms of life, and he keeps us safe. When we have a relationship with Christ, we have the assurance that we will be with God in heaven throughout eternity, but we also have him with us here on earth in fullness. When you and I have a relationship with Christ, you have it all. There are no additional experiences that you need to seek. There's no additional truths outside of Scripture that you need to discover. In Christ, you have the fullness of God. Don't be deceived by some outside misinformation. Now, right now, you are in one of two boats. You have that relationship with Christ, and that is all you need. Now, just take advantage of it. Look back at the first part of Colossians, where Paul is describing the life of living in Christ and not just for Christ. Take advantage of it. Don't let anyone fool you to tell you there's something else you need. Take those principles that we've talked about in Colossians and live your life and put them into practice. You were saved by faith and you live in faith. Or maybe there hasn't been a time when you established that relationship. If you would like to talk to someone about what that means, about how you can do that, I'd ask you to please reach out to us here at Metadale. You can contact us through email, through Facebook Messenger, through call the church. We would love to talk to you. But if there's another person in your life, a relative or a friend who's a, a firm Christ follower, talk to them. Establish that relationship and learn what it means to live in Christ. Now, next week, we'll look at the second type of misinformation that can endanger our walk. But until then, stay safe. We love you, and we'll see you next week.